When the SF-23 was revealed, it looked like a continuation of the aerodynamic design of the F-175. But take a closer look, and you would see some nice aerodynamic features within the SF-23. In today's video, let's take a look at the SF-23 from front to back, looking at all the design details and discuss on what they do and how they work, and if they are legal at certain places, according to the latest rules. For legal checks, we will be using the 2023 technical rules provided by the FIA. Let's start with the front wing as usual. Probably the thing that caught most people's attention are the slot gap separators, more specifically, the band Mercedes style slot gap separators. When you look at the rules, eight slot gap separators are allowed for one side of the front wing. Mercedes tried out this design last season, and after opposition from other teams on the grid, this design was deemed illegal. So, how is this design legal this year? Well, the rules have changed a little bit from 2022, which has allowed slot gap separators to be utilized for both structural and aerodynamic purposes. When you look at the front wing of a Formula 1 car, it has outwashed from the center to the end plate's direction. So naturally, there exists outwash on the front wing due to difference in pressures. What the slot gap separators do is increase the outwash generated. The question now is, if naturally, the front wing creates outwash, why would Ferrari add slot gap separators to create more outwash? The answer is, that the extra outwash will lead to generation of vortices over the slot gap separators, towards the front suspension, and possibly feeding into the underfloor as well. When you take a look at the fourth wing profile, you can see the ends are flat, but the middle is ramped up. This might be to create a powerful vortex system towards the front suspension, towards the side pods and the underfloor, or it could be to provide a much cleaner airflow from the front of the car. When you look at the center of the front wing, the nose is disconnected from the first wing profile. In the F175, the nose was connected to the first wing profile. I think this design decision depends on the overall aero philosophy of the car, as we have seen many teams having the nose connected to the first wing element, while others have it disconnected. When you take a look at the front suspension, you can the track rod has been lowered when compared with the F175. The rear triangle arm upper is much lower and the intention is to laminate the flow towards the floor thanks to carbon covers that become the first flow diverters. When you take a look at the mid-floor, you can see that the barge board is cranked, which could lead to a powerful vortex system created along the floor edge. Also will lead to generation of outwash along the floor edge and possible to the tire wake as well. When you take a look at the start of the floor, it resembles a V-shape. I guess this design is present to send airflow to along the side pods. This does have losses, but this airflow will be much cleaner when compared with a flat floor entry. The next interesting part was highlighted by the Kyle Engineer's YouTube channel. That detail is this small air intake duct. There seems to be an air exit on top of the side pods, near the bodywork. I think there is some aerodynamic purpose for the duct, but if you want to know exciting details about that air duct, better watch the video at Kyle Engineers about the aerodynamic details of the SF-23 after watching the rest of our video. I'll drop the video link in the description down below. Next, let's take a look at the side pods. Up front, it looks like the SF-23 carries over the side pods from the F-175, but there are many differences between the 2022 and 2023 design. First, the inlet shape is more flat than the 2022 inlet design. When you look at the cut under the inlet, in the 2023 SF23, the cutout is much more smooth than the F175. When you look both cars from the sides, the SF23 side pods are a bit more longer than the F175 side pods. The side pods gully is a bit spread out on the top of the side pods on the SF23. The spread gully will aid in pulling the airflow over the side pods close to the bodywork, which will move towards the rear beam wings rather than infiltrating the rear wing airflow. Again taking a look at the side view of both cars on the bottom of the side pods, the bodywork is pulled in more than on the 2022 version, especially on the rear of the SF23 side pods. This might be to manipulate the airflow around the car, pulling the vorticities around the side pods and bodywork towards the rear beam wing area, towards the rear underfloor. One reason I think Ferrari has done this is to make the airflow around the bodywork cleaner, which could result in gain in certain amount of lap time. Coming back to the front of the side pods, this blister on the side pods is the side impact structure. While it might hurt aerodynamic performance due to uneven surface levels, it is a mandatory requirement to ensure driver safety. Taking a look from the back, you can see that the side pods, front to rear, is tightly packages, ensure stable airflow and aerodynamic performance. You can see the only opening on the rear of the side pods is for the rear suspension elements, and that small space could aid in rear cooling of the SF23. 
Also, the rear of the side pods from the top view, the bodywork is pulled in hard, leading to the airflow from the side pods to be pulled exactly to the rear beam wings in the diffuser area. I believe when considering the side pods, the SF23 has a design which presents the possibility for the best airflow around that structure, not too complex, leading to a cleaner airflow around the side pods to the rear of the car. When you take a close look at the roll hoop structure, you will see these wings on weather side, which I guess it to create a vortex system on the top of the bodywork. The roll hoop itself is a bit smaller than the roll hoop of the F-175. And taking a look back, the ramp down from the roll hoop is much smoother when you compare the design with the F-175, which leads to a much more cleaner and smoother airflow, feeding to the rear wing, beam wings and the rear diffuser area. Overall, I think the SF-23 is complex design changes, which Ferrari does believe will improve their chances on clinching that world title after a long wait. How would they perform? We would have to wait till the 23rd of February, the preseason testing to find it out ourselves. What is the best design feature of the SF23 according to you, and what sort of performance are you expecting from the SF23? Share your thoughts with us in the comments section down below. We appreciate you watching our video today. If you like what you see, please subscribe to the channel and switch on the notifications to be notified when we release new content in preparation of the 2023 Formula 1 preseason testing.